And so we just want to kind of jump into Ab J Jacob here. Uh, childhood images, Jacob gets on chapter 25 of, G of Genesis, and basically his mother, Rebecca, is going to have uh, two kids. And it says this, um, Isaac prayed to the Lord on behalf of his wife because she was barren. And the Lord answered his prayer, and his wife, Rebecca, became pregnant. And the babies jostled with each other, and, 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 and she said, why is this happening to me? So she went to inquire of the Lord, and the Lord said to her, Two nations are in your womb, and two peoples from within you will be separated. One people will be stronger than the other, and the older will serve the younger. The older will serve the younger. So right from birth, who was chosen? Jacob chosen. That's all that matters, okay? Jacob, Jacob is chosen, okay? So Jacob is chosen, which means then that who is not chosen? Esau, okay? So this gets to be a question then, what uh, on this thing about God can choose one and reject the other before they were even born. Did Esau have a chance? Did Esau have a chance? Jacob was, you know, the, the one that was chosen before birth. So what do you do with all this kind of thing? This brings up the issue of predestination versus free will. God predestined them before they were born. God predestined them. Jacob would be the, the child of, of, of the choosing, and and Esau would not. Yeah. I'm wondering with the one, and how do you know how much is predestination and how much is predestination? Okay, yeah. So how, how do you know how much? I'm just raising this issue with this point. We're going to come back to this discussion over and over again. But we're just kind of initiated here, and I'm, we'll have some... Uh, we will, I was going to say we'll have some solutions later, but I'm lying to you, so uh, we, will, we will discuss this anyways. This is one of these things you argue late at night about and things like that. But this predestination, how much of it's predestination chosen and fixed, and how much of it is free will? Uh, you should recognize in this class, have we developed right from the Garden of Eden the ability of human beings to make choice? Is that a big theme in Scripture, the ability of human beings to make choice? But here... The, the predestination side comes up that God chooses Jacob before they're even born. Uh, by the way, if you jump over to, uh, what is it, Malachi uh, chapter 1, or you can go over to uh, Romans. Let me do the Romans 9 thing, but it's quoting Malachi. Romans 9 says this. Um, oh, where is it? 9.13, I think it is. Yeah. It says, God's purpose in election might stand not by works, but by him who calls um, she was told, she being Rebecca was told, the older will serve the younger, just as it is written, Jacob have I loved, Esau have I hated. Jacob have I loved, Esau have I hated. Before they were even born, Jacob have I loved, Esau have I hated. Did, did Esau stand a chance? What does it mean that God hated Esau? What's the deal with that? Some people take that love-hate to be a kind of a comparative thing. So it's like God saying, I love Jacob more, Esau was loved less. And so it was a more or less kind of thing. It wasn't mean hate. It was just a relative thing. Uh, I think probably a better way to explain that is working with the covenantal terminology, that to love someone meant to choose them, to hate mean, meant not to choose them. And so that the love, hurt, uh, hate terminology is, is terminology of the covenant. God makes a covenant with one. He does not make a covenant with the other. So this is a big debate. And... Um, we should say, uh, if a person is not chosen, then are they still responsible? If a person is not chosen, is he still responsible? Esau wasn't responsible. An example of that, what should Esau have done? Now, does Esau turn into a, a really kind of profane person? Is it possible that Esau could have said, Jacob is the chosen one, and choose to get under Jacob and support him in his role? Is that possible? Uh, does anybody remember there's a guy named Moses in Exodus? And Moses, who is Moses' older brother? Aaron, who is his older sister? Miriam. And so Miriam and Aaron are older, but who is the one that's chosen by God to lead Israel? Moses. Do Aaron and Miriam have to get under and support Moses? And is that what they do? Except in Numbers 12, there's some controversy. But most of the time, that's what they do. They get under him. Is that what Esau should have done? Is get under and supported Jacob? Now, does Esau do that, or does Esau want to kill his brother? Okay, so we get into tension there. So what I want to suggest is Esau still made choices. He still had choices of how he was going to respond to this. And so, okay, so a person's chosen is still responsible. Is that fair? And the answer is, yeah, it's fair. God chooses, and, you know, he... By the way, is life fair? 
my son really struggles with this at a certain level. What would have happened if he had been born in Afghanistan? Would his life have been totally, absolutely different than being born in America and his old man's a professor, okay? By the way, are all of your lives different? Is life fair? Is everybody in this class on exactly the same playing field? Or do all of you come from different backgrounds with some pluses and minuses in various areas? Yeah, we're all different. This idea of everything got to be level in the playing field and stuff, it's crazy, okay? Is life fair? No, this is the way it is, okay? I was born to a poor family, okay? None of my kids, my brothers and sisters barely went to college at all. We just, we didn't have the money, we didn't have the vision and stuff like that. Other kids, boom, they all went off to college and things like that. Different families, you got to work with that. So, now, the two boys' names, kind of want to work on this a little bit. Jacob's name has the sound of, it's not etymologically connected necessarily, but the sound is that his name, heel, that Jacob means heel, Jacob also sounds like deceiver, the term for deceiver and heel grabber. And when they're born, it says when they came out, basically, Esau came out all what? Red and hairy. Red and, hairy and Jacob came out grabbing the heel of his brother. And so they called him, basically, an echo of this term heel, that is Jacob, and then later that term also with uh, deceiver. Uh, Esau, Esau comes out, he's all red, 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 they call me red, okay? His name is Big Red, basically Esau is Big Red. The country of Edom, Esau's descendants become the Edomites. The Edomites, the DM in Hebrew, the DM means red, okay? So Edom will be associated with red. By the way, what are the color of the rocks in the country of Edom? Does anybody ever see the picture of Petra? They're red. It's red sandstone. Yeah, yeah. So the place where he comes to dwell is red sandstone in the land of Edom. And then, by the way, now this is just, I'm being kind of funny, but not really. Every time you see the Edomites in Scripture, what are the Edomites or Esau's descendants? What will the Edomites do almost every time? They'll kill Jews, okay? The Edomites kill Jews. That's what they do, okay? So the Edomites are going to be, there's always going to be this tension with the Jews. They're going to kill a lot of Jews. They are Esau's descendants. Esau or Seir, as he's called. Esau and Seir means Harry. So basically, we've got one kid named Harry, okay, Harry or Big Red, and that's his name. By the way, we still name people Harry today. Spell with two R's, right? So, but his name is Harry because he was all Harry from the start. By the way, did that hairiness come into play later on? And so, Big Red's there. Uh, Esau, what's he do? In chapter 25 here at the end, um, let me just kind of narrate the story. So Esau is out hunting. He's a man, of, he's a hunter. Jacob is a man of the field. Jacob's got some, by the way, what color was the red stew, by the way? What color was the stew? Red. red stew. Do you get the play on red here? Red stew for red, big red comes in off the field. So big red comes in, he's starving, he's been out hunting, he doesn't have food and stuff. He comes into Jacob, Jacob's got this red stew. Hey, hey red, do you want some red stew? And he says, I'm gonna starve, man, I gotta get, I, I, what's good is my birthright. So basically Jacob barters for the birthright. And Jacob says, you give me the birthright, I'll give you the stew. Esau says, I'm gonna die if I don't get that stew, so who cares about the birthright? He does it. By the way, was that legitimate to barter for the birthright? And the answer is yes. We know that now from those new zoo laws. We've actually got laws that say it's, a, it's absolutely legal to barter for your birthright. Question, do they barter for everything over there? They barter for everything, and your birthright can be bartered for. Now question, just because it was legal, does that mean it was nice? Was Jacob being nice to his brother when he... No. No. So I want to say it's legal. We know it's legal, but we're, we're saying it's, we're not sure that, it's, uh, that it was the nicest thing with Esau and things. Now, the deception of Isaac, what happens here? There's a really nasty verse in chapter 25, verse 28. Check this out. Isaac, who had a taste for wild game, loved Esau, but Rebekah loved Jacob. What happens when the father loves one child and the mother loves the other child? Parental favoritism leads to what? Sibling rivalry. And so you get the siblings clashing. When parents favor one kid over another, you're going to have warfare among the kids. And so there's problems of parental favoritism. The father loves Esau, the mother loves Jacob, and now you're going to be, this is going to be a major problem here. Now what happens? 
Isaac's old. He's blind. He can't see. He calls in his son Esau, and he says, Esau, man, I just want the best steak ever, okay? And so go out and you know, shoot the animal and bring it back, cook it just the way I love it, and then when you bring it back, I will bless you. Esau goes trucking out with his bow and arrow. He's going to go out and get this animal and stuff. Who overhears the who, telephone call? Rebecca's there. She overhears the whole thing. She says, hey, Jacob, we've got to make the move now. Your father's blind. Question, do you take advantage of blind people? Of course. So anyways, so are we going to go in there? Take care. Dad, Dad can't see you. Dad can't see you. And so you're going to go in there. But what's the problem? Dad can't see you, but Harry is what? Harry is Harry. So Jacob says, uh-oh. So the mother says, okay, get me a goat. Cook, we'll cook the goat up. But by the way, I should always say this too. Do you know the goats in Palestine, if you ever touch the back of those goats, you get about splinters in your hand. The goat's hair is so wiry and thick. There is no human being on the face of the earth that has hair that thick and wiry. Okay, so it's not the backside of these goats. They're really, it's really nasty hair. On the underside of the goat, in their armpit and on the underside, is it really fine hair, almost like soft leather. So that's what she must have stripped out and put on him. So she puts on him. Does the father, father says, he says, here I am with your food, dad. And all of a sudden, it's like, hey, his voice sounds like something else. He calls him in there. What's he do? Does he grab Jacob, neck and hands and stuff? And he says, oh, the guy's hairy. It must be hairy. And so he eats the food. Does he bless Jacob? He blesses Jacob, gives him all the blessings. And then Jacob kind of trots out. And then who trots in next? Esau comes in and here I am, your son Esau, whom you love, you know. Uh, and then the father like freaks out, and he's been tricked. So the father's been tricked at this point, and you get this tension then that's going to be between Jacob and Esau. Who gets the blessing? Did the father realize that he had done wrong? The, Esau says, what's the matter, Dad? You only got one blessing? And Dad said, I bless Jacob, and he will be blessed. And I think Isaac realized that he should have been blessed Jacob because that's what God's promise was. And so even though, by the way, does God use all this trickery and evil to accomplish his purposes? Yes. God uses sometimes human evil to accomplish his purposes. And there's going to be a conflict next. And then we'll look at next time this conflict of what happened with this Jacob and Esau struggle over, the, over this blessing of the father. Have some of you felt the blessing of your father? Let me just end there. Is the blessing of the father important to you? I had to wait till I was about 42 years old till I actually felt the blessing of my father. And I just want to say, some of you know what that means to have the blessing of your father. It's a beautiful thing. So anyways, Jacob, Esau, we'll see you next time. Work on numbers.